This chapter is about childhood. Childhood is that stage during which joy, happiness, fun, entertainment revolve around us. It is a carefree moment of life. This is the privilege enjoyed by children like you and me. But on the other side of the fence, in a poor world, there are rag pickers, scrounger like Sahib, who finds happiness and entertainment in the garbage dumps. The first part of the chapter is about Sahib and his friends. The story is told through a narrative style by Annie's Young. For the rest of the explanation, I will use Annie's Young as narrator. The narrator lives close to the garbage dumps of her neighborhood. She notices many children delving into the garbage to seek valuable items. After countless observation, she asked a boy, whose name is Sahib, Why do you do this? To which Sahib replies, I have nothing else to do. The narrator engages in conversation with Sahib and asks about his school. She finds out that Sahib does not go to school and that there is no school in the neighborhood. Had it been there, still Sahib could not afford to go to school. Jokingly, the narrator asked the boy if he would come to school if she were to start one, to which Sahib immediately replies affirmatively. Sahib means Lord of the Universe. Sahib would love if he comes to know the meaning of his name. Sahib and his family are immigrants from Dhaka. They had to leave Dhaka due to storms that swept away their homes and fields and reached India looking for work and place for survival. The narrator is acquainted with many of the children of the rag pickers by now. Seeing them not wearing chapels, she inquires why. They tell her many reasons, but the real reason is that they keep the tradition, and the tradition is to stay barefoot, irrespective of them having chapels or not. The narrator remembers a story told by a man from UDP. The man, as a young boy, would pass in front a temple on his way to school. He would pray for a pair of shoes. When he grew up and had his own family, his son was never deprived of wearing a shoe, unlike his father. Acquainting herself with the rag pickers of her neighborhood, the narrator remembers Seema Puri in Delhi. Those who live in Seema Puri are squatters who come from Bangladesh back in 1971. Sahib's family is among them. They have lived here for more than 30 years without an identity, without permits, but with ration cards that get the names of voters' lists and enable them to buy grain. For them, food is more important for survival than an identity. The narrator asks them why did they leave the green fields of Dhaka. A group of women answered that they would live in Simapuri than in the fields that gave them no grain. 
These people pitch their tents wherever they find food. Their means to survival is only rag picking. After many years, scrounging becomes their blessings. Garbage, to them, is gold. It is their daily bread. Sometimes Sahib would find a rupee, even a ten rupee note. For them, garbage dump is a site for treasure hunt. For the children, it is wrapped in wonder. For the elders, it is a means of survival. One winter morning, the narrator spots Sahib outside a tennis court. She sees Sahib wearing torn tennis shoes that look strange over his discolored shirt and shorts. He tells the narrator that someone has given him. For a barefoot Sahib, a torn shoe is a dream come true. Sahib joins to work in a tea stall that pays him 800 rupees. His face has lost the carefree look. Is he happy with the job? His smile fades. The plastic bag that he carries earlier is lighter than the steel canister he carries now. He is the master of his own plastic bag, but not of the steel canister. The tea shop is controlling him now. Sahib is no longer his own master.